Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So Chris and I are on our way to the shopping center and we're gonna do a grocery haul for you. Keep in mind we're in Italy, so I'm not familiar with brands and packages. Um, so it might be a little bit more difficult to compare the labels on things. And yeah, but I'll do the best I can. One tip for going grocery shopping, especially starting a diet like this, is just have a good research uh, so you are aware of what a carb is really and it will save you so much time when you're in there. Don't go with anybody who is going to be impatient or hangry because you need to actually take a little bit more time, especially for the first shop, just so you can compare items and do your research whilst you're in there. Like if you come across an item of food that you're unsure of or the packaging is unclear with the macros, um, just pop it into my fitness pal and yeah, look it up on the spot. Starting in fruit and vegetables, going to avoid fruit altogether, especially when starting the diet. So when selecting vegetables, I avoid root vegetables, starchy vegetables, um, any vegetable that is kind of sweet and all fruit. So and that that's tomatoes and things like that that come under that category. Peppers, for example, they're really high in carbs, so I avoid those. Um, what I would take from this section, green beans but always pop it into my fitness pal before eating it just to make sure your quantities are good. Um, I would have a little bit of zucchini. Um, normally pretty good with the herbs, so like coriander, parsley, broccoli, I eat a lot of broccoli. Um, it's also good to do a list before you leave the house as well, so just to save time when you're actually here. Cabbage, cabbage is good. Any of these like leafy greens, really good for salads, and you get most of your vitamins and nutrients. So like magnesium, calcium, iron, uh, folate, vitamin K, vitamin C. You can get most of those from leafy greens. So eat a lot of them. What I don't have is I don't have lime and lemon. So. Adding these things to dressings or just foods, I don't do. Um, it's probably something you can introduce once you're keto adapted and then you can kind of figure out whether or not these things will kick you out of ketosis. So with fruit, um, the only fruits that I would kind of consider are berries, so blueberries and raspberries and I think maybe strawberries are okay as well. Um, I would Stay away from these things until you're keto adapted and you actually know what will kick you out. This section here I would avoid altogether, so potato, garlic, um, tomato, yeah, all of that avoid. I eat a lot of spinach, most of my meals are spinach based. And like any of this stuff, so anything that you green, just be careful with the meat packet and stuff with like carrot and pumpkin and like if you're eating a salad and there's bits and pieces in there that you're unsure of whether or not it's actually carby, you just don't eat it. Um, mushrooms. I eat mushrooms. Um, asparagus. I'll have asparagus. Really rich in vitamin C and vitamin A. Olives are really good to get the salt up as well. So you want to add salt to your meals. Um, they say about a teaspoon a day of um, pink sea salt. And this will increase electrolytes. You need sodium in this diet, so we retain water and have electrolytes. Um, that's kind of what the keto food is. If you're lacking in electrolytes, and vitamins and minerals then that's when you start to feel muscle aches and you lack energy and you feel lethargic so 
but yeah, all ends are good for that. Okay, so nuts. The nuts that I would go to would be hazelnuts, hazelnuts, macadamias, pecans are really good. At home, I would have Brazil nuts. Just be careful with um, the amount there as well because they're really high in selenium. Ones that I would avoid are pistachio. I wouldn't have almonds. Um, peanuts. Nuts are really calorie dense though, so just make sure you are putting them into my fitness pal and the right amount so you know whether or not you're going over. For smoothies and things like that, replacing bananas, um, I would use an avocado. Avocado is really good. Really, really high in fat avocado and healthy fats. So eat as much of this as you can. They're quite expensive though most, in most parts of the world. But yeah, really good. I avoid dried fruit altogether. Dried fruit is as bad as like lollies pretty much. It's just sugar. Yes, there's fiber, but I would get fiber from other sources. Okay, so milk. I don't have milk. If you are going to have milk, have a whole fat milk. Um, just with this diet, avoid anything that's low fat or fat free, because it generally means that it could mean that there's higher sugar, um, which is carbs. But with milk, I replace it with almond milk, and so and all is almonds, calories, and I think hazelnut might be okay as well. Coconut's good too. Um, with carbohydrates, when I'm looking at a label, anything that's greater than three per three grams per serving, I probably just would steer clear of, um, and just obviously look for the higher fat option. So, processed meats, try and moderate these. I eat processed meats, I live in Italy, we have amazing meats. Um, things like prosciutto, salami, hams, bacon. If you are going to have it, just make sure you're not getting glazed hams and bacons. A lot of them are uh, like maple glazed, and which just means they're soaked in sugar. I wouldn't eat something like this. What is that actually? Is that like a hot dog? Yeah. <laughs> is it a hot dog? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't eat that. <laughs> That's too processed for me, and I wouldn't eat that. <laughs> That's too plastic for me. Um, eggs, I eat probably two eggs a day. There are keto people saying that they eat like four or five eggs. I wouldn't do that for cholesterol reasons, but just pop it in my fitness pal and um, the nutritional information will come up and then you kind of know what your limits are. Salmon, salmon's really good. Fatty, fatty fish. Um, what's that other fatty fish? Mackerel. 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 Mackerel's really good. It's just hard to buy, unfortunately. Smoked salmon high in omega-3s, which are the healthy fats. So these these are the fats that are going to bring down your cholesterol um, and you know have a whole lot of other health benefits. Butter, I have a lot of butter. I'll have like a tablespoon in my eggs in the morning. Um, I'll put sometimes I'll put it on like vegetables and things like that. Um, people put it in their bulletproof coffee. I don't do that, but I have before and it's fine. Always go for grass-fed grass -fed butter. That's the better quality. And when you're preparing, just get the highest fat. It, butter's carbless, so um, that's another way to get your fats in without upping your proteins and carbohydrates as well. For the vegans and vegetarians, um, tofu. Tofu is good. The only thing I would be careful of with tofu is um, how much protein is in there, but I guess it's equivalent to having meat, so you're fine. I really like tofu. So yeah, there are vegan cheeses as well. They're higher in carb. The fat is still high though, so per serving, this has got 16 grams and 8.5 grams of carbohydrate, so I just wouldn't have it for the serving. And if you can go without it, then I probably would. it so clear that I really love cheese in these videos um, so this is my favorite section but what I would do in 
collecting cheeses is I've got, for example, two uh, cottage cheeses here. Cottage cheese is actually a higher carb one, so just in moderation and um, for me it's a bit of a treat. I was eating a lot of this when I first started the diet and I think that probably had something to do with the fact that I wasn't going into ketosis quickly. Um, so in the, these, are, these are each 150 grams in containers. I would just pick up the two, look on the label. So this one here has got three grams of fat. And this one here has got 4.5 grams of fat. However, in the jocker here, it's got 3.5 grams of carbohydrates. And this one here has got one gram of carbohydrates. So although the fat is higher in this one, it's got higher carbs. So I wouldn't pick it. I'd pick the lower fat with the lower carbs. With alcohol, I'll have a dry wine. Um, I try and steer clear of alcohol altogether when I started the diet. Um, and once I became keto adapted, I do have drinks more often, like I will have glasses of wine. When I go out and I do have a bigger night, I will drink um, gin or vodka. I will only mix that with soda. I don't add um, lemon or lime, and I certainly don't have any soft drink or juice, really high in sugar. Spirits are good, so like whiskey, gin, vodka. Um, I tried to get into whiskey, I couldn't, I just don't like it. But any of these like lolly drinks, they are a serious no-go. Okay, so I've had um, a few questions come through regarding low-carb advertised snacks and things like that. I can't actually read any of the books right now, but I know, like for example, like Atkins brands and things like that, they, there's a bit of confusion whether or not the carbs are calculated as net carbs or total carbs. I don't actually know, and I feel like if you're in that position where you don't know, just don't buy it and don't eat it. Um, try and make, if you do need sweet treats yourself, just make them yourself at home. There's loads of recipes online for keto snacks. I actually avoid baking altogether because it's just higher carbs, higher calories, and on this diet because I am so filled with um, healthy fats and oils and things like that, I don't crave sweet things. What I occasionally will have a bit of, and I've introduced this since being keto adapted, is I'll have 90% lint chocolate. That seems to be okay with me. Sometimes I can have up to, I don't know, how much do I have? Three pieces, I have four, like four three, squares. Three or four squares and I'm fine, like totally fine. I thought that maybe I would be a little bit further out um, after having quite a bit the night before yesterday and I was actually further in than I was the day before. With supplements, so magnesium, potassium, calcium, iron, all those things you do need to keep an eye on. And they're things that you can generally feel if your body is deficient. So most of that, like I said before, most of that stuff you can actually get from leafy greens and vegetables. But if you are feeling achy and tired, um, or symptoms that you experience during the keto flu, it's generally because you are deficient on these things. Um, so increasing your electrolytes, so having sodium, um, adding salt to things, um, sipping on like chicken broth, that will increase the production of electrolytes and um, minerals and vitamins will come with that and then that will kind of help with the muscle aches and pains and you'll get through that keto phase sooner. The only kind of tablet supplement I have is magnesium. Um, I don't feel like I need it, but I just have it anyway. With fiber and digestion, I'm just a little bit hesitant to have anything um, supplementing fiber because of gen like all those metamucils and things like that, they generally are quite high in sugar and carbs. Um, try and get it from natural foods, so like seeds and things like that. Uh, flax seeds really good. And other seeds that are really good as well, like sesame seeds, um, chia seeds, but just all in moderation, no more than a tablespoon at a time kind of thing. I drink a lot of tea and coffee and I add coconut oil. So a lot of people have asked me how you get your fats up without increasing your proteins and carbs. Um, just add oil to everything. I can have up to like, probably like seven tablespoons of coconut oil a day. Uh, there was a study that came out by the American Heart Association which was false saying that coconut oil is not a good fat. It is, it is saturated but um, it's actually not considered bad. With, with coffee I'll have 
coffee. Um, I can't drink a whole lot of coffee. I get jittery. I'm a small person, but I love decaffeinated coffee, and I just add my oils to that. Um, MCT oil, so that's another supplement. You can buy that from a health food store. It's quite expensive, but it's worth it. Um, I will have a tablespoon of that in like a decaf or a caffeinated coffee before a workout, and it gives me that hit of energy as well. I'm not sure if it's placebo, but it seems to work for me. I'll always have a black coffee. I don't add milk, um, and I find with adding coconut oils and MCT oils, they taste so good um, without milk that I don't even notice. With cheeses, the best cheeses to get are the soft cheeses. Hard cheeses are okay. Um, cottage cheese is higher in carb, but if you are unsure of a kind of cheese and whether or not you're allowed to have it, just put it in my fitness pal and I'll tell you straight away. Remember, we're going for really high fats, moderate protein, low carbs. Um, low to no carbs, really. With um, getting your salts in in order to get electrolytes, um, a good thing to drink is chicken stock. That um, It's also a good snack and an appetite suppressor. And with oils, I will always have extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil. They're the only two oils I have. Um, I'm not really familiar with the best oils to cook with, but just jump online and you can figure out which ones are the good and bad fats. Just with dressings and things like that, like if you order a salad out in a restaurant or whatever, I always just get the dressing on the side and just make sure I know what's in it before I actually have it. Or I'll just go the plain olive oil option and add like um, salt, pepper, and chili and things like that for extra flavor. Okay, so we just finished our haul. That was actually really difficult. There were so many people in there and we had the store manager approach us about three or four times, um, warning us that we are not allowed to film in there, but we did it anyway. I'm sorry if this vlog is a bit all over the shop. Um, I will write a list at the bottom of the video um, kind of just saying what I would buy um, and once I get back to Australia in, a, in three weeks time or so I'll do another haul uh, just where I'm more familiar with the brands and um, types of food so I can easily explain what I'm doing. One thing I will touch up on as well is protein. Um, I've read and heard different things. So I used to have a lot of protein whey. I didn't find that this spiked my insulin or affected my chances of going into ketosis and didn't kick me out. But I've heard that it actually can for some people. If you're super sensitive to insulin, um, it may cause a spike. But another type of protein which is really good on this diet is blends that's been recommended. So up to you with what you want to do. I've had questions about uh, BCAAs. I don't use this supplement, but, um, and same with creatine. I don't use the supplements, but they can be used on this diet. I would just recommend using natural flavors and things like that because the sweetened ones will definitely um, spike insulin. But thank you so much for watching and I'm sorry if it was a little unclear. Um, I'll probably do some more and yeah, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.